Someone's cursing, my lord. Late night lunch. Someone's puffling, my lord. Late night lunch. Someone's growing, my lord. Late night lunch. Oh lord, late night lunch. This is a post-watershed production. Welcome to our humble domicile. Our home is Sukasa. Please wipe your feet and anoint your head. Can I take your umbrella? That's strange, it hasn't rained today. Are you wearing anything under that mac? I am the musky-smelling, immaculately dressed, pencil moustache, master of the house, Aaron Bliss. And the limping hunchback preparing your three-course meal that's definitely not poisoned is Mike Large. Limping hunchback. You, <laughs> you might have got those roles a little bit confused. But anyway. Not in my eyes. <laughs> that's cute. Uh, <laughs> so, Mike. How are we? How are we all? Late night How have we been growing? Growing well, I, I assume. Oh no, I have. Oh yeah. No, I haven't. Yeah, <laughs> you haven't been growing well. No, I've been growing. Oh. Just never grows well. <laughs> <clears throat> so tonight, on Lena Large, our theme will be hospitality, and for uh, certain people, that has nothing to do with hospitals. Why don't you give us a little bit of a lowdown on what you think hospitality is, or what it means? Something, the relationship between a guest and uh, their host, uh, the practice of being hospitable, if you will. So and what does it include? What does what include? Hosp- you can't even read an auto cue well, properly, can you? No. Uh, it includes the reception and entertainment of guests, visitors, or perhaps strangers. Yeah. 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 Look, Mike. What am I looking at? Well, I don't know, that cute little picture of bringing in the boar's head. Because, of course, in, in heraldry, the boar's head was sometimes used as a symbol of hospitality, often seen as representing the host's willingness to feed guests well, which is why it appears as a symbol of a number of inns and taverns. I'm hungry now. Yeah, me too. Mike, we've all had those weekends where the car breaks down in the middle of the nowhere in the pouring rain... You knock on a strange house. We recently had one. To ask for a phone. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but it wasn't raining. Uh, why don't you tell us that story before I continue? Sorry, yeah, to interrupt you. Although, I'm <laughs> so, actually, I'm not sorry at all. I was just going to say, I recently had to pull over the side of the M4 <laughs> and change my tyre. That was quite good on the way back from Cardiff. So, oh, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Did you do it successfully? Well, yeah, of course. I'm here, aren't I? Ah, man points. I love that. Okay, so you have broken down. We've all been there. But you know those weekends where the car breaks down in the pouring rain in the middle of nowhere? You uh, you knock on a strange door, maybe to ask for a phone. Maybe to ask for sex. I don't know. Before you know it, you share some drug brandy, wake up to find your genitals torn off by the orchestrator of some satanic orgy, while some nubile nymphs maypole dance with your intestines, and maybe a friendly hellhound uses your skull as a teething rusk. But that's not for everyone. Sometimes we like our hospitality a little less violent. Brutal. Yeah. <laughs> Has that ever happened to you? Uh, twice, actually. Oh, yeah. Yeah, same hard on. Oh, so you got your genitals back after they were torn off then? Oh, you're done fucking straight. Just just stitch your intestines back in. Yeah, it's easily done. Oh, <laughs> um, I bet it is. I'll show you one day. Please don't. So... The word hospitality derives from the Latin hospes, which means go- uh, sorry, ha- ghost. Actually, host and guest, so or if you ghost. splice them together, ghost or stranger. Hospes is formed from hosties, which means stranger or enemy. Ah, the latter being where terms like hostile derive. You see that etymology is all connected. In the current usage, though, in the West today, hospitality is rarely a matter of protection and survival and more associated with etiquette and entertainment. However, still 
involves showing respect for one's guests, providing for their needs and treating them as equals. Hence, wow. me, casa, su casa. Cultures and subcultures vary in the extent to, wh- to which one is expected to show hospitality to strangers, as opposed to personal friends or members of one's in-group. Hospitality ethics is a discipline that studies this usage of hospitality. Well, there you grow. Is that what you understood to be hospitality? Well, yes. Yeah. But, yeah, I don't think we should insult uh, our listeners too much. Look, there's a difference between insulting people and insulting their intelligence. Now, we might glorify the uh, s- the latter half of that, but people love having their intelligence insulted if there's a payoff in the end in the form of a cheap laugh. And that's what's led us to where we are today. Okay. So when was the last time you hosted anything? That's a good question. When was the last time I hosted anything? I I had a a couple of friends around the other day watching NFL. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, so uh, give us insight. How how did you prepare for this uh, shindig? Well, it was quite easy, really, quite simple. Yeah? Yeah, I gave them, you know, come around about this time and all I did to prepare was ensure that I was naked <laughs> I had a feeling that was coming um, yeah I, I left I left you know, condoms just around the room <laughs> uh, took a massive shit and made sure I was lube, lube just you know sprinkled around See, all sorts of I hear sex that's, toys I hear and that's, whips and chains. I hear that's the way you like to make your guests welcome is taking a massive shit in the toilet and just not flushing it, leaving it there as kind of an omen for what's to come. Well, I, t- I tend to try and do that as soon as I know they're coming. So if I know someone's yeah. coming a couple of weeks in advance, uh, <laughs> you've got a bit of time to build that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, just like... yeah. E- eating like bricks and drinking petrol and stuff make make sure it's well if you're going to do it do it properly <laughs> <just mean. laughs> I love I love that idea that you, you've had some friends around maybe you've cleared the place up a little bit made it smell a bit nicer you've laid out some like banquet food on the table everything's looking quite nice people come in especially if they're female and just like oh well, you've cleared up for us and they're quietly impressed and then they say oh I just need to go for a wee uh, where's your toilet is it in there they get in and there's just a scream and <laughs> mm. Mm. yeah the best thing to do is uh, <laughs> not let them out as well yeah just um, just make them stay if, in there if the door opens outwards it's easy because obviously you just put your foot against it and go uh, sorry look, the, the door must be stuck do you, I, I might need to get the fire brigade <laughs> at which point you then obviously gas them just like spray something under the door till they pass out but that's another game entirely I like the sound of that game <laughs> no I just I, I really like that as a, as a prank to play on people just to freak them out just everything's nice and well presented and, and they're having a good time and then they get into the toilet and they're like oh. what the hell is that Kevin being here and, and how awkward do they feel when they walk in there because they're surely thinking oh my God, that w- was that was that Mike? I and then and then they're thinking, oh man, I I don't really want to sit anywhere near that. I want to flush that first things, you know, first things first. But then they're worried about what if it doesn't flush, mm. and then it 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 sounds like to everyone else it sounds like I'm continually flushing, so I'm the one who's blocked the toilet. Mm. And it's a tricky situation. Tricky, yes. How did you get around it last time? I didn't. I didn't have to get around it. I was the one. <laughs> I was the host. So you were the host. How did my guest get around it? <laughs> uh, she screamed and ran away. So. <laughs> Obviously, I oh, pursued. You're uh, really tempting people to uh, to uh, reply to any kind of invitation to your abode. I don't tend to invite people. They tend to invite themselves. So I guess that says something. <laughs> Yeah, it could. And no wonder you keep trying to drive them away in that case. Mm. I do my best and they <clears> still come crawling back. Uh, sure they do, Mike. Hey, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. I said, hey, 
what's growing on? Welcome. Do you offer a warm welcome? I, I mean, offer... would you would you offer refuge to the weary traveller who comes asking so little? Or would you bolt the door? Well, it entirely depends, doesn't it? Does it? Of what, course on what? it does. On what? Male if, or female? If they're, yeah, if they're a damsel in distress or a Jehovah's Witness, I'm yeah. sure you'd respond differently. Yeah. Hmm, OK, I'm having a look at these global concepts of uh, hospitality, because, of course, Mike, we think of hospitality as... I don't know, making the house look presentable, offering offering nourishment or beverages unlimited to a certain extent, so as much as makes your guests feel comfortable, and perhaps entertainment, some kind of entertainment that, that the night hinges around. But other than that, you know, we don't generally go much further. Other cultures, you know, their hospitality might involve sacrificing your firstborn child <laughs> or um, sexual favours or, or sexual favours that's my kind of hospitality yeah but it is welcome spread them yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway I mean some of these are global concepts we've got Celtic cultures uh, valued the concept of hospitality especially in terms of protection a host who granted a person's request for refuge was expected not only to provide food and shelter to his or her guests, but to make sure they did not come to harm while under their care. That suggests that if you were harbouring a wanted criminal, or, say, someone on the run from the Mafia, you'd be personally responsible for fending off the uh, brutal hordes, ready to uh, break them all over. Mm -hmm. To the ancient Greeks, hospitality was a divine right, the host was expected to make sure the needs of his guests were always seen to. The ancient Greek term xenia, or theosenia, when a god was involved, expressed this ritualised guest-friendship relation. In Greek society, a person's ability to buy the laws to hospitality determined nobility and social standing. There was a character in Greek mythology who offered a banquet to the gods, and actually, aha, yeah, he served up his son, Pelops. His son was called Pelops. And he served him up as food. He killed his own son and cut him up and prepared him for dinner to, to test the divinity of the gods. Because, of course, if they were really gods, they would instantly be able to tell that they were eating human flesh. And they did. And he was duly punished. <laughs> but that's another example of hospitality. Quite extreme, I think. Uh, well, you, 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 you do what you have to to please your guests. No, needs must. In India, hospitality is based on the principle Athiti Devo Baba, meaning the guest is God. This sounds a lot like the customer is always right. Mm. This principle is, although I'd go, uh, I can kind of go with that a bit more than the customer is always right, because after all, a guest is someone you surely personally approved to come yeah. into your home. This principle is shown in a number of stories where a guest is literally a god. <laughs> is literally a god. Literally a god. I think that might be misuse of the word literal. Where a guest is literally a god who rewards the provider of hospitality. Mm. Okay, maybe a fictional story where they become a god. From this stems the Indian approach of graciousness towards guests at home and in all social situations. It's funny because when you read those, it's like it's like there's a set of unwritten rules about how you must treat guests. Is this not something that comes naturally? Surely, if you're well, inviting yeah. someone into your house, you you wouldn't you wouldn't invite someone into your house just to have arguments or I, treat them like shit. I guess different levels of hospitality come naturally, or more or less naturally, to different people. Isn't it? But I mean, for instance, surely the whole the whole thing about hospitality is you're to me you're making yourself a bit vulnerable because what you're doing is you're saying to a person, "I like you so much, or I respect you so much that I'm willing to invite you into my personal space," and by by virtue of doing that, I'm also giving you license, whether I like it or not, to judge me based on your experience. Yeah, do you, does that yes. make sense? Yes. So what I'm saying is, why would you need specific rules on how to treat a guest? Surely your own personal pride would dictate that you treat them well. 
Some people don't have that. <laughs> Some people don't have personal pride. No. Do you want to name any people? No. <laughs> I don't need to. I've got a name in we my can head. Bo- we can both think of people, but I've let's got, not... Got let's a name not, in my head, definitely. Let's not just... No. Let's not throw names around. I mean, how do you treat your guests? Well, I've told you, I offer them sexual favours. In evolutionary biology... Reciprocal altruism is a behaviour whereby an organism acts in a manner that temporarily reduces its fitness while increasing another organism's fitness with the expectation that the other organism will act in a similar manner at a later time. We as humans probably know this as treat others as you would wish to be treated. You scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. That's more corruption, but yeah. Yeah, uh, on, the, on the same lines. No, what I mean is treat others as you would no, like no, to yeah, be treated. Yeah, treat others as you'd like to be treated is is less committal. If you're saying scratch my back and I'll scratch yours, that's more blackmail and or I'll only do this for a favour. Well, it's an expectation. If we're talking, no, yeah, it's an expectation in the manner of if I treat them well, you they will remember that. And hopefully you will treat me well. Yeah. To do the same. But it's not a specific. They've done me a favour, though. Thereby, I owe them a favour. That kind of thing. Mm. Do you see what I mean? Carry on. Okay, oh, I've, qu- got, I've got a great example. Go on. Pop culture. <clears throat> Come down with me. Yeah. Do, yeah. do you not think that's a classic example? Okay, it's slightly different because obviously they're all narcissistic dicks, <laughs> and uh, part of. You know, part of that personal pride thing comes because they're narcissists and they want to come across as characters and uh, interesting and uh, well presented and wealthy on TV. But other than that, there is a sense of reciprocal altruism, even if it's not in the purest sense. They want to put on a show and make a dinner event as enjoyable and as eventful and as uh, pleasant as possible for all their guests in the anticipation that their guests will reward them with a high score. They're not necessarily doing it for the virtue of, oh, well, you know, I had a nice time at theirs, so I'll give them a nice time. Although that that but is how we... It's supposed to work supposed that way. To, yeah. But no, it's... The a whole, c- you know, act in a similar manner at a later time thing, yeah. Should yeah, that's how it should work. But yeah, okay, come down with me is a bad example because it's corrupted by narcissism and uh, backstabbing to try and win. What? Yeah, but a better way of saying it is yeah. If you if you host a dinner party, dinner party is good. We'll we'll go on to uh, different types of hospitality situations uh, a little bit later. But yeah, like a dinner party, Mike. You host a dinner party, <clears throat> and the reason that you treat your guests well. It's twofold, isn't it? One, you want to ref- you want you you want your personal life and your home and whatever else to reflect well on yourself. So you'd like them to go away and say to their friends, "Oh, I had a lovely time at such and such a house. They got such a lovely place, and she's such an amazing cook, and oh, he was so funny, and all these kind of things." But there's also the secondary thing of, <clears throat> "Oh, I hope they invite us over to there sometime. You know, give us the same treatment, maybe." Yeah. So maybe that is the reciprocal altruism we were talking about, rather than rather than come down with me. He grows. He grows. You ever been to a dinner party, Mike? Oh uh, yes, I've ruined <laughs> many. <laughs> ruined. <laughs> with my. Because you you're the one who gets far too drunk and. Well, yeah. <laughs> so it's rubbing the legs of all the women under the table and. Uh, yeah, I usually end up naked. And <laughs> Making if, a pass if, at the if, host's wife. If I don't turn up naked, then I usually oh, end up naked, yeah. Please, we're, we're trying to eat here. Oh, I was trying to eat. <laughs> For God's sake. There is no hope of you, Mike. And Correct. trust me, I would never invite you to a dinner party. Yes, you would. You know full well you would. <clears throat> no, the level of dinner party that I would invite you to is, Mike, we're going to McDonald's drive through. You go in. So, Mike, have you uh, cool. have you heard about have you heard of the term couch surfing? Couch surfing. Yeah, it was um, one of those uh, um, splinter cell definitions from uh, hospitality. Um, yeah, I think I vaguely have. 
What? Just, uh, just enlighten us. <laughs> enlighten us. Enlighten us, please, Wikipedia. Couchsurfing is a neologism referring to the practice of moving from one friend's house to another, sleeping in whatever spare space is available, floor or couch, generally staying a few days before moving on to the next house. The term actually pre-existed the organisation. There is a couchsurfing.net or .com or something that exists. Couchsurfing.org even. Website frequently referred to themselves as Couchsurfers, Surfers or CSers for short, demonstrating a mix of loyalty to both the website and the ideals it is thought to support. Right. What do you think about that? Uh, um, I think we all know or have known a few couch surfers in our time. Yeah, Ratini used to be one, but, didn't he? Uh, <laughs> no, he's the whore. I was a couch surfer for uh, a brief period when I went back to visit the old uni friends. It's a remarkably good way of travelling the world, I've heard. If you can pull it off. Oh, I can pull it off. Ah, uh, The key, of course, is to limit your stay at any one place to a few days. Get out before you've block the toilet eating all the food before they you know they discover the terrible mess you've made in their shed that kind of thing get out before you render yourself unwelcome exactly so and then obviously you before your back. crimes are detected get the hell out and stay at another friend's get your ass to Mars way across town probably or maybe next country or on Mars uh, or on Mars yeah because the great thing about couch surfing <clears throat> is, like you say, if you say you were trying to travel the world or you're in a, you try and travel Europe or a European country, the best way to do it is couch surfing because the accommodation is zero and you're, you, all you've got to do is always be on your toes because it's no bother as long as you're not a complete arsehole. So Don't this is where it has it well with Mike. <laughs> but as long as you're not a complete arsehole and antisocial bastard, people will actually will gratefully give you three or four days to sleep on their floor or their sofa, won't they? Most people. Yeah. They'll be more than happy to host you for that period of time. Some even longer. Yeah, but three or four days doesn't really impinge on anyone unnecessarily. Because, okay, they might have work or whatever, but as long as you're doing your own thing, buying your own food and that, you know, it'll probably be a pleasure. You might help chip in with the housework. But bottom line is you have zero accommodation costs and you can probably use their shower and everything with no questions asked. Now, like I say, as long as you limit it to a few days, nobody's really concerned at all. Whereas, once you've moved on to that next house, you reset the clock and it all starts again. So even though you're potentially spending months and months crashing on people's sofas, because they're different people, it's costing you next to nothing. It's not really bothering them. <clears throat> and of course, you, you have the pleasure of you know hanging out with different people, so you never get bored, bored of each other. So couch surfing is a great way of maximising advantage of people's hosp natural hospitality, I guess. Yes. You thinking uh, of getting into it? Uh... Because apparently the website's yeah. free to register. Oh, really? Uh-huh. I might have a look at that one later. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> somewhere I was sure I can squeeze that website in between all the porn. Uh, give you a bit more detail about the uh, website, just in case you think this is a fantastic idea, because I do. There are three methods, Couchsurfing, that's Couchsurfing with a capital C, as in the website, the company that increase security and trust which are all visible on member profiles for potential hosts and surfers because the one thing you don't want to do because couch surfing they're talking about not you know they're not talking about you being in another country and hosting someone you've already met who happens to live somewhere else they're talking about you hosting potential strangers which of course could be dangerous for all concerned if you're female there's the obvious risks of hosting a, a male stranger. Even if you're male, you know, you and uh, and even if it's a female, you run the risk of coming home to find all your furniture and fittings uh, stripped. You run the risk of finding your house maybe burned down. 
your stuff being stolen, whatever else. So, you know, nobody wants to host criminals. Personal references, apparently, uh, provide part of the security, which hosts and servers have the option to leave after having used the service to comment on what their experience with the person they are leaving a reference for was like. It's also possible to leave neutral or negative references if it is deemed appropriate and negative references are taken very seriously. Obviously, they'll give you a chance to move away from the people before you leave the negative references. A negative reference is sometimes removed by the site when they're deemed to be done in some kind of retaliatory or unfair manner, like slandering people you just don't Spiteful get on with. Bitching. Yeah, rather than people who've actually done something serious wrong. Members tend to rely heavily on references when trying to determine whether another user is safe or not. Safe, that's an interesting word. Safe is a very, <laughs> is a very interesting... It's a very interesting definition for a user. I like the way they call them users as well. I know, obviously, it's relating to users of the website. But yeah. <laughs> an optional credit card verification system allowing members to lock in their name and mailing address by making a credit card payment under any name and entering a coach that counts surfing mails to an address of their choice. The verification program is the principal source of revenue for the website. In an effort to increase economic fairness, the verification fee is based on a sliding scale, taking into account the purchasing power parity and human development index of the country of registration. The system is widely viewed as heavily flawed and often ignored, since in the end it only verifies there is a name attached to a credit card and mailing address. No background safety check is ever performed and information does not need to be updated when someone moves. So that sounds like a lame duck of a point. A bit. Okay, and a personal vouching system whereby a member that had been vouched for three times originally started with the founders of the site might in turn vouch for any member or other members he knew or had met through couch surfing and trusts. So that's almost exactly like personal references, only you don't actually have to have stayed with them. You just need to have known them and say, yeah, hey, they're, this guy's they're cool. sound. He's safe. Don't worry, he won't sexually abuse your parents. Hospitality, of course, can be a double-edged sword because hospitality with friends, you know, with people you trust, it's not really that much of a risk. You put in an effort, you make some sacrifices, but you know what you're getting yourself into. Hospitality to strangers is a different kettle of fish, so you do need these safeguards in place to protect you from con artists and thieves and even more dangerous characters that are out there look, just looking to take advantage of any situation. I'm looking to take advantage of any situation. We know that, and that's why you should never invite Mike Large into your house under any circumstances. Always always invite me into your house you will never ever regret it unless unless you have young impressionable daughters oh shut up I'm just saying I knew this was going to come up at some point or yeah and actually if there's any females in your house at all it's probably not a good idea no anyway we should also mention a hospitality service with, uh, the concept of hospitality exchange because of course there's not just couch surfing as a company the hospitality exchange is where individuals generally travel offer or seek accommodation with no money changing hands it's exact, pretty much the same as couch surfing so they don't really expect any payment but I'm sure they have some safeguards in place the same way to protect people from housing people just looking to take just advantage carry a Glock yeah yeah just carry a gun man. I'm sure that was that's what I do it... <laughs> right okay <clears throat> just saying another thing we haven't mentioned about hospitality Mike Go what, on. what about hospitality as a business because we've, we've just been talking about personal hospitality yeah what about hospitality as in the, the service sector hotels hotel bed and breakfast motel <laughs> Holiday in, but yeah. What about Good. the uh, what about the hospitality sector? What about Re- restaurants, cafes, bed and breakfast, hotels? Yeah. Where's the best restaurant you've ever been to? <laughs> God. Uh, oh, not... hang on. What? No. Let me rephrase that question. <laughs> Please do. And uh, I'll give you some time to think, because we'll uh, probably play some some music in a minute go on you just think where's the re- best restaurant you've been to for food and where's the best restaurant 
for hospitality. <laughs> I want to know. Because oh, obviously yeah. it intrigues me and I may want to go there. More probably to the food one. But yeah, food I care about more than okay. hospitality. But yeah, I'll have a think. <laughs> I'll have a think. You we'll all home, have a think. If you at home have a think, let us know. Let me know. Hospitality wise. Uh-huh. Where's 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 the best you've been? I, I honestly can't remember. Those kind of things don't stick in my mind. No, the I food th- sticks in my mind. Yeah, the food does. Not I the know. hospitality. Yeah, we- weirdly, the Pinto Lounge in Banbury had one of the best meals I'd ever had. But that's because I couldn't. I'd never really seen it on another menu. I think it was like a like a button a squash risotto or something. Sounds gay. Uh, there you go whatever no go on then what's the best restaurant you've been to what for hospitality yeah okay I know it's ter- I know it's terrible but go on maybe it's easy to uh, talk about this what about the times when you've had lousy hospitality <laughs> where the service was appalling do you remember any of those occasions I try not to yeah but surely they stick in your mind more than yeah there was one actually. Where was I? I can't remember. I I can I can definitely think of the best. Yeah. Oh, okay. uh, McDonald's. Oh <laughs> shut. <laughs> no, there was one the other day. Yeah. Really bad, and I can't remember where it was. But I remember thinking like these people are just rude. We actually went for a, a meal for someone's birthday the other. <clears throat> the other night in that Italian restaurant on Broad Street is it in Banbury you know the, the, the street that oh what's it called? I can't remember what it's called no that's but good. it's a nice place and um no we uh yeah the, uh, the birthday girl got um a little bit arsy about the fact that certain drinks she wanted weren't on the menu but I noticed that the girl who was serving us was actually didn't have a particularly good attitude for a waitress should we say because you know what they say as a, as a waitress or a waiter as long as someone's not rude to you personally you should always be smiling and uh, open to any requests or what have you any requests well yeah and uh, yeah as soon as as soon as there was any kind of complaint or question um, she seemed to have a face like thunder and just kind of closed up and cop on yeah, didn't didn't really want to talk. She nearly actually lost our custom because the birthday girl was actually quite eager to go. And then we had this jolly uh, this jolly guy who looked a bit like the I don't know the assistant manager of the place or whatever, who came over and uh, went out of his way to like get a rapport going, like being really jovial and kind of asking questions about what we were doing there and our whose birthday was it, making sure that. You know, he could do whatever he could to accommodate what we were asking for. So it doesn't make a big difference. It, that's the difference it can make between, you know, someone who's showing good hospitality and someone who, you know, doesn't really seem to care whether or not, you know, people are happy at all. Yeah. I can't remember. But, I mean, there are lots of places that have good hospitality. I can, I can name, I can name one. Gron. Bengal Spice. <laughs> their hospitality is fantastic. Their hospitality is fantastic. And their food is... They're top gents. They're so, so polite. Like Sometimes there's a bit of a question mark over how long they take to take you on, but they are top gents. They'll do they're, whatever they can they'll to... They'll hold the door for you, shake your hand on the way out. They'll, uh, they'll tolerate certain puffins yeah. who are less than... Um, politically correct that kind of thing no they they are you're right they're top gens the difference that really like top quality hospitality can make between a successful business and one that goes under but yeah the Mayfrey 2 you know they've that's the problem they've uh, they've employed one or two dodgy staff members down the years I can think of one fairly recently you know what I'm talking about Mike bless her <laughs> Anyway, okay, let's quickly switch back to private again. So, Mike, I made a small list of 
events that you might need to show hospitality for that me or you might take part in at some point. Oh, grow. So we would talk about dinner parties. Can you th- see yourself ever hosting a dinner party or is that something you have to do when you're a part of a couple? Well, I'll go to dinner parties, you know, if someone wants to feed me, that's great. Ah. Uh, you know, Are you saying as, you wouldn't... As far as hosting them, yeah, I... Well, I'm all, you know... I, I only host as a couple. Yeah. And um, when I say host as a couple, I mean... She does all the work. Yeah, I'd have some wine to do it for me. And <laughs> I sit and drink beers while she prepared everything. Well and described. And then, you, yeah, by the time everyone arrives, you're already pissed. Yeah. And uh, I, yeah. yeah I'm sitting there. Shouting table, abuse at people. Shouting abuse at She has her. to put you to bed. Come on, love. <laughs> We're hungry in here. And uh, get me another beer. Yeah, embarrassing everyone, yeah. Okay, what about family Christmas gatherings? What about them? Do you enjoy those? Would you host that, any of them? Oh, no, I wouldn't fucking host them. Too much work. Yeah? Too much. Is hospitality more difficult for something like that? Because, of course, you've got it. The difference between being nice to friends and being nice to family is there might be family members you really don't get It's so with. much harder to be nice to family. <laughs> <laughs> it shouldn't be, but it is. Yeah, but also, at the same time, you can't get rid of them. <laughs> So oh, you, you have can. to, yeah. Oh, <laughs> you surely Get have to engineer a good out. atmosphere. <laughs> okay, what about okay ones that are more like ah, to... and that if you don't host it yourself, yeah, and you do feel like you don't want to be with them anymore, you can just leave. Whereas if you're hosting, so, you're stuck. And take all their presents. Yeah. What about a uh, slumber party? Fucking oh, right. You, you like that idea? Oh yeah, I was with trying. a fifteen-year-old girl. I, pre- I pretended to be a girl and hosted a few of those. Yeah, I can really see that working. <laughs> On the internet. Oh yeah, your little sl- I've heard about your little slumber parties. Yeah. Us- usually I'm with a court case. Well, you know. What about poker at a friend's house? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Done that plenty that, of times. Yeah. Okay. How does the hospitality go for that then? The hospitality et- etiquette. What? <clears throat> Say you're hosting a poker night. You've invited I don't know Greg Ross, Dan Hall, me, Pete. Yeah. How do you go about it? What's the hospitality rules? Come around. Play poker. So what are you doing for it? Set up the table. <laughs> Get some beers in the fridge. Oh, yeah. Snacks? What kind yeah, of snacks? Yeah, some snackage around. I mean, you know, whatever's on offer at the car at the time. Oh, God. So you don't put a lot of effort into it, then? Oh, no. Music? Well, that depends. Or entertainment, no? Music, yeah. Yeah, get music Are you saying you just do what's easiest? You wouldn't put any effort into it at all? Yeah. Yeah, probably go for a ruby. Well, I'm probably glad go for you... a curry, get a takeout. Ruby. Get yeah. get that get that in. And then uh Yeah. Yeah. Do old, yeah, spark, this, yeah, spark up the old Cubans. But yeah, put some music on. Put on some sexy music. Yeah, people go out earlier, like make silly silly bets and lose and end up <clears throat> chipless and moneyless then you know stick stick the Xbox on the forum or something you know oh yeah yeah okay so yeah. That your hospitality does at least extend to making sure all your guests are taken care of oh feed them they water them and make sure they've got something to do at all time yeah yeah but you won't unblock the toilet or clean it no I'll purposefully <laughs> block it <laughs> We've established this. Alright, yeah, yeah. So, hospitality, do, do you think it. Is it a natural thing? Does it come easy to you? Or do you have to really get yourself into the mood to. to be a hospitable person? I think it. it depends on who <coughs> I'm playing host to. But again, if it's, you, if it's you someone. You've invited them. If it's someone who's. regularly there, you know, then they. Oh, you, you put know, less of an effort in. You, you do, don't you? Like, if it's... Or someone who you know, like, extremely well. And, for example, someone... You know, if if it's someone who's going to come round yeah. and they'll be able to spot straight away, it's like, ah, oh, you put effort in. Like... Yeah. Whereas, oh, it depends whereas if, if you want to so- impress them. Or yeah. if it's someone who, you, you know, perhaps you don't know as well. Mm-hmm. Or, or you want to impress them, maybe it's a lady, or, you know... You, or a potential business as, you, know, you don't know as well and yeah. or they don't know you as well then you know that it's a little bit different you pull out all the stops yeah 
I mean, when you know, sometimes you know, you know Chris come round and yeah. he normally tells me, rings me up and says, oh, "I am coming to yours and I will be here at this time." <laughs> to which I reply, "Okay, fine." You know, sometimes I can just be naked when he turns up. <laughs> All right, let, let yeah, and, that, and that's cool. Okay, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Shut it's, up. That's fine. I've stop. T- I've I've stop, mine. Just stop. Okay. I've let's defecated ju- everywhere. Uh, let's just wrap it up with. Oh, let's wrap it up. What would it right. take? What would it take for you for your mask of hospitality to slip? What's What's the one thing a guest would do that instantly you would stop being hospitable and maybe you would ask oh, them to leave? Ideas. Eat my food. Oh, Jesus Christ. All right, okay, we're not gonna get a serious answer, are you? I no, all right. I don't know really. I've never had outside of criminal activity. I've never been in that situation. All right, lucky you. So it's time to end tonight's thrilling edition, our eighty-fifth show. I hope you're impressed. We will return next week, and in the meantime, people, be good to each other. Be as hospitable as you can because you never know when it might come back to uh, pay you back in kind mm-hmm. but of course you shouldn't just do it for that reason no. altruism for altruism's sake please indeed uh, yes we'll grow you next week people and uh, get home safely love you bye <laughs>